Welcome Algebra 1 scholars. This is Mrs. Parsons. Uh, today we are talking about simplifying expressions, so make sure you have your notebook out and you're taking your Cornell notes. So first, when simplifying expressions, we have to do orders of operations. And the order of operation is the order in which you perform operations, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, in a math problem. Okay, Why do we need this? So if I was looking at this problem right here, 6 divided by 2 times 1 plus 2, Okay, say I was trying to do it left to right. We read left to right. Let's do a math problem left to right. So that would start with 6 divided by 2, which is 3, times 1 plus 2. Okay, so how would I do this? 3 times, three times 1 is 3 plus 2, so that's 5. But if we use order of operations, Okay, some of you guys have heard the term PEMDAS before, where I do the parentheses first. So that gives me 6 divided by 2, doing the parentheses first, giving me 3. And then you do multiplication division left to right. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 3, which is 9. Okay, so 5 would not give you the correct answer because you have to follow the order of operations. So what is the order? Some of you guys might have heard the term PEMDAS before. Okay, and that still applies. So parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, but we could also group it into four where the first one is the grouping symbols. Those are your parentheses, you might see brackets. You're always going to do those first. Then your exponents, so anything that might be raised to a power, you're going to do those next. Then you're going to do multiplication or division from left to right. And then lastly, you'll do addition or subtraction also from left to right. So let's look at this one first. Okay, my first operation I would have to do is my grouping. So that is these parentheses right here. So I'm going to do those first. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. Next step is exponents. I don't have any. Multiplication or division? Well, I've got multiplication right here. 8 times negative 9, which is negative 72. Last thing I'm going to do is add. 10 plus negative 72 is negative 62. So negative 62 would be the correct answer since I followed my order of operations. Let's try another example. So you're going to start with your grouping symbols. So anything inside the parentheses. So negative 100 divided by 10. That's going to give me negative 10 squared. Next step, exponents. So I'm going to take negative 10 squared, which is positive 100. Now my last step is actually multiplication. You can't see it here, but there's a 1 right in front, negative 1. So negative 1 times 100 gives me negative 100. So my solution there would be negative 100. One last example on this. Okay, so we're going to start with our grouping symbols. And as you see here, not only do I have parentheses, but I also have brackets. So you're going to work from the inside out. So starting on the inside, I've got 5 plus 2. So that's going to give me 7. 
okay? But I still have those brackets there, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Seven minus two is five. And then five times six is 30. Another way to simplify expressions is by combining like terms. What is a like term? Well, like terms are terms whose variables and their exponents are the same. So looking at this chart under the like terms, I've got 2x and negative 7x. Since both of them have a singular x, those are like terms. Okay, the only thing that we can change during like terms is the coefficient. So here the coefficient is 2 and negative 7. We're not too concerned about that. We're more concerned about their variables and making sure those are the same. So here I have x squared and x squared, xy and xy, x squared y, x squared y, x and x. When I look at unlike terms, some examples of unlike terms are 2x and negative 7y. Since their variables are not the same, then they are unlike terms. Here I have x squared and x, okay? Since they're both x's, but their exponents are not the same. This one has a squared here where this is just a singular x. x, y, and x, z, not like. x squared, y, x, y squared. They look similar, okay? But one, the x is squared, the other, the y is squared. x and four, no x here. So if I wanted to combine the like terms in example four, then I would just want to combine the coefficients, but the variables stay the same. So in this first one, you're gonna start with the highest, which is four X cubed, okay? Do I have any other X cubes? No, so that just remains four X cubed. Okay, then I'm gonna go to my x squared. I have a three x squared and a negative x squared. What is my coefficient here? I don't see one, does that make it zero? No, there's a hidden one there. So I'm going to subtract the coefficients three minus one, and that's gonna give me a positive two, and the variable stays the same x squared. I don't have any just single x terms, so I'm going to move on to my constants. Negative 7, positive 2. That gives me negative 5. Okay, so when you are combining like terms, you are adding or subtracting the coefficients, but the variable stays the same. Another way to simplify is the distributive property. The distributive property enables us to simplify expressions that have an expression being multiplied by a single term. And you'll see this written different ways, um, but when you are distributing, what's it mean to distribute? Like if I distributed papers, that means I'm taking a paper and I'm distributing it, giving one to each person in the class. Same thing here. You're gonna take the coefficient out front that you're multiplying by, and you're going to distribute it to each of the terms in the parentheses through multiplication. So let's try an example. Five times the quantity, three M minus six. So I'm gonna distribute five times three M. That's gonna give me 15 M. Then I'm gonna take the five and I'm gonna distribute it to this back term, five, times negative six, which is negative 30. Can I combine these together? No, because they are not like terms. One has an M, one doesn't have a variable. Let's try this one. Where's the distributive property at? Well, it's right here where I have a term being multiplied by a quantity of terms in parentheses. So I'm gonna take five times 2r, which is 10r, and then I gotta take the five and distribute it back here, which is positive 30. 
Do I take the 5 and distribute it to this guy? No, he is out of the parentheses. So in the end, he's just going to go in the back here. There's one more step that I can do. I can combine my like terms. So I have 10r minus 12r. Those are like terms, so I need to combine those. So when I add the coefficients, 10 minus 12, that gives me negative 2r plus 30. <clears throat> I can't combine these terms because they are not like terms. One has an r and one doesn't. So this is our simplified expression. All right, here I have distributive property not just once, but twice. So I'm going to take the x and I'm going to distribute it to this first set. So x times 2y is going to give me 2xy. x times 7 gives me plus 7x. Then I have to do the distributive property over here, where I take y times 9, which gives me plus 9y, and y times 5x, which gives me plus 5xy. Check and see if you have any like terms here. Well, I have two terms that have xy. So I'm going to combine those coefficients. 2 plus 5 gives me 7xy. And I can't combine anything else. So that just goes into my expression. And that is going to be our simplified expression.